So here we are in the beautiful, incredible Prague, and we are fortunate enough for the next episode of Exponential Africa to have the founder and co-chief test pilot of Gravity Industries, Richard Browning. Thanks for being on the show. No problem at all. Nice to see you. Yeah, good to see you. So, um, you know, Richard, you have created a, a flying suit. Can you explain to us what, it, what exactly it is? Yeah, so I, I guess a lot of people draw parallels with the Iron Man suit. Uh, what we actually have is a, is a flying system comprising of five little baby gas turbines. They're, they're baby jet engines of the likes that you'd actually have on a jet fighter or a civil airliner, but they're just very small. And I've got two on each arm and then one larger one just around the lower part of my back. And between all of those engines, they produce enough thrust enough kind of force pushing downwards that that lifts you off the ground and after that it's all about vectoring that thrust pointing it where you, where you kind of want to go and you get this ridiculous maneuverability and control amazing i mean and you were at the singularity south africa summit last year in 2018 mm -hmm. flying on the kailami race track which was absolutely amazing and you said so you've got this this incredible control you've got more control than, than standing on two legs yeah it, it's it's been a complete accidental discovery but but the human brain when you really think about it, it is an amazing balancing tool the fact we're standing here quite happily on two legs we're all top heavy and unstable and yet we manage that and, and if you think about a human being running across an uneven field that's an even crazier challenge when you look at people like boston dynamics and what they achieve you really realize what power we have now you look at examples of skiing or snowboarding or skateboarding or whatever, then that's, those are other good examples of people applying that balance capability. All I'm doing, and again accidentally, is applying that to now flying, but using these thrust vectors. And yeah, you can land even in gusting strong winds on something the size of an, you know, your iPad. It is remarkable. It's, it's been an amazing discovery, really. It's taken you a while to get you. It wasn't like you just sort of came up with this idea and, and were ready, you know, flying. How long has the process been to have? You iterated this innovation. So I used to have a normal, fairly sensible job. I was an oil trader in the city of London for about 16 years, and I've had a habit of pursuing unusual ideas. In early 2016, this idea started to form about human flight, and could I apply this background I had in calisthenics training and ultra marathons. So I, it really meant that I was fairly strong for my weight and I was fairly light. And I thought that flying at the end of the day, let's say gliding is about supporting your weight on a surface, usually a, a wing surface. If I could substitute that wing surface for a form of propulsion, I can hold my body position in a number of different ways. You know, the strength really isn't a problem. Um, and I thought, you know, as ludicrous as it sounds, wouldn't it be cool if you could actually somehow come up with an arrangement of small, compact thrust devices that would allow you to maneuver around and fly? And for no practical reason whatsoever, just for the pure joy of the challenge. And then from March 2016 through to November 2016, I just tried, mostly me, but a couple of co collaborators, we just tried a huge number of different things, learning from constant failure. Failure we could get back up from, but constant failure. And then we got to this point where an engine on each leg and two on each arm actually worked really well and then throughout that winter we refined it to the model you now see and then launched the company gravity in around well almost to the day in fact it is the first of april today uh, april fool's day 2017 two years ago we actually launched the company gravity gravity industries and wow it's actually quite a good april fool's joke to launch uh, a flying well, suit on april, april it was 1st. In 2017, it was, we were getting closer and closer to the rough date we were going to launch it. It dawned on us that, oh my God, we're heading towards April Fool's Day. And we thought this could go really well and could not go really well. And we <laughs> thought, let's just try it. And accidentally, it got shared way more than it probably would have done otherwise because people thought, gosh, look at the effort these guys have put into this April Fool's joke. And then it started to dawn on people that we started to show up at events all over the place, like TED 2017, we did that. Um, we did an event for Boost uh, VC. All of these things started to percolate up through the press. And it's like, okay, these guys aren't joking. And it got reshared again. And we hit like a billion impressions within the first month of going wow, live. So unbelievable. this is event 74 in the 23rd country we've flown. Uh, and I've now got uh, half a dozen pilots, half a dozen suits. In fact, we're here, uh, myself and Ryan, one of my other pilots who's acting as my ground crew today. We've got another team going to New York today to fly for a big event and revealing a 3D printed suit, an entirely 3D printed suit. And we've got another team flying in the UK. So, I mean, we are going, I can't quite admit we're going exponential yet, but we're certainly expanding very quickly. I mean, uh, you know, it, is, it seems like it's happening at this incredible pace. I mean, you, you know, you came in and flew in South Africa last year to now seeing you at the Czech summit where tomorrow you're going to be flying over this bridge 
Hopefully. Uh, un- well, I think under the bridge. Under I think the bridge. over so might be bridge. a little bit unpopular with the authorities, but yeah, hopefully <laughs> weaving in and out under the bridge. And actually, I think it'll be a really nice little mini showcase of the race series we really are building now. We are, I, th- I think I said it on stage with you guys last year, we're actually using the revenue from all of these events all over the world to go back into building the capability to put on races in exactly these kind of city centre locations, pulling guys and girls from different sporting backgrounds and really celebrating this human and machine uh, kind of collaboration that, that really, I suppose, the Gravity Jet Suit represents. And it's a completely new sport you, you're about to create. Firstly, this, you disrupt uh, you know, humans walking to start now being able to fly. And then now the next disruption is going to be creating a new sport. For yeah, I, I, I just think, you know, lots of people get very excited about how we maybe are, you know, opening the dawn onto a new era of human mobility and things. And yeah, maybe, but that's going to take a little while. It's not a very efficient way of moving a human being around. It's very noisy. But you know what, as a means of hopefully inspiring and entertaining people, I think it's, it's going to be, I'd like to think, pretty unparalleled. And what a great mechanism for generating revenue to go back into the R&D, into things like wing generation and wing development, which we're working on now. Um, and in the meantime, we you know, grow this brand, Gravity, which represents this unbounded, joy-fueled exploration into the impossible. So exciting. Well, thanks so much for being on the show. No problem and, at all. Uh, well, we it, hope to see you soon in South Africa. Yeah, that'd be great. If you like this episode, make sure to subscribe to more Exponential Africas. See you on the next one.